everyone welcome back to another session on dentistry and more so today we have a different analysis on cephalometrics that is Steiner's analysis she was put forward by Steiner in 1930 so we had seen Down's analysis it have too many uh, measurements so to uh, make it very uh, easier the Steiner put forward uh, a different approach of analysis so Steiner also having a different uh, skeletal and dental parameters along with he has a soft tissue analysis also so let's see what are the skeletal analysis the first one is SNA ankle then SNB ankle, ANB ankle, mandibular plane ankle occlusal plane ankle whereas in dental analysis it is upper incisor to NA ankle and linear measurement inter incisal angle which we had seen in down analysis mm. lower incisor NB angle the same linear measurement and also having a soft tissue that is S line now let's see what is SNA angle so in Downs analysis we had seen uh, the basic plane was FH plane that is sporion uh, orbitally plane but in Steiner's analysis uh, he used exactly the SN plane that is Cella Turcica and Nasion so the SNA angle is Cella Nasion plane and combining with Nasion point A so the angle formed between S, N and A is SN angle which is 82 degree so this angle is important because if the angle is increased in prognathic um, maxilla or prognathism and if it, it will be decreased in retrognathism because this angle will be increased so you can see the angle will be increased in prognathic uh, situation and it will be decreased in retrognathism so now let's see what is uh, SNB angle so the SNB angle it is the same way how we did SNA joining the point S N and B so we get S and B which indicates basically the anterior posterior positioning of mandible in relation to cranial base so we have seen S and A angle which was the anterior posterior positioning of maxilla in relation to cranial base this is positioning of mandible in relation to cranial base so S and B angle is 80 degree so if the mandible is prognathic the SNB angle will increase and if the mandible is retrognathic or retrusive man mandible the SNB angle will decrease so it's the same way how we interpret uh, SNA SNA is about maxilla SNB about mandible how it is related to the cranial base so mean angle is 80 degree the next one is A and B angle. So A and B angle is very difficult to draw because the angle itself is just 2 degree. It is uh, like connecting the point N A to point A, point N to point B. So the nation point is connected to A and B and the angle between this is A and B angle. It basically denotes uh, relative position of maxilla and mandible to each other. So, SNA we have seen cranial base to maxilla, SNB cranial base to mandible, ANB the relative position of maxilla and mandible to eat, each other. So, the basic angulation is 2 degree. So, it will go uh, higher, the ankle will increase in class 2 skeletal cases and it will decrease in class 3 uh, cases so in class 2 this angle will increase and in class 3 the angle will decrease so class 3 it will decrease because this point B will shift towards uh, forward and this angle will decrease and in class 2 the point A will go forward so there will be increased value in A and B angle it is a relative position maxilla and mandible to each other the next one is mandibular plane angle this we had seen in uh, Downs analysis but the plane was FH plane FH plane and uh, 
the mantipolar plane angle we had seen but in Steiner analysis this is different because the plane is SN plane so it is the angle between SN plane and mantipolar plane angle and the angle is 32 degree we know that it is about the vertical and horizontal growth pattern if it is uh, lesser the angle is lesser then uh, the person is horizontal growing phase and if it is very uh, bigger the angle is uh, wider that is more than 32 degree the person is having uh, vertical growth pattern so that is mantipolar plane angle the last one in uh, skeletal analysis is occlusal plane angle occlusal plane angle uh, the mean value is 14.5 degree so it is the fundamental plane that is SN plane and connecting with occlusal plane so occlusal plane and SN plane it is connecting so it will be connected here and the value is 14.5 degree which uh, basically indicates the relation of occlusal plane to the cranium and face and it also indicates the growth pattern of an individual so that is the five skeletal analysis SNA angle, SNB angle, ANB angle uh, the mandibular plane angle, mandibular plane angle will be here is like here and also the occlusal uh, plane angle so that uh, how we completed the skeletal analysis now let's see the dental analysis in dental analysis the first one is upper incisor to N angle so this is the upper incisor long axis which is connected to the N nasion point A angle so this angle is normal degree is 22 degree so this is the angle 22 degree so NA angle angle indicates the relative inclination of upper incisor inclination of upper incisor and it will be increased in class 2 division 1 so the angle will be increased in class 2 division 1 that is the first one upper incisor to NA angle uh, which is connected by the N point A and the long axis of upper central incisor the next one is upper incisor to NA but the linear measurement so the tip of upper incisor so if you can see this is a maxillary incisor and its tip towards the NA line so how what is the difference in linear measurement in millimeter the distance from NA line to the central incisor and it is commonly 4 millimeter 4 millimeter and will be increased uh, if the proclination is more uh, just like the ankle if it is going forwardly placed this distance between NA line and the maxillary incisors will be more so that is a linear measurement there is no angulation the third one is inter incisal angulation this we have seen in Downs analysis that is the long axis of maxillary central incisor and mandibular central incisor and the angle between these two it is commonly around we know that it is in Downs analysis it was 132 here also it is 132 131 degree uh, it will be increased uh, in class 2 division 2 because class 2 division 2 this maxillary incisor will be reclined so this axis will go like this perpendicular direction so this angle will be more and in case of uh, class 2 division 1 or class 1 bimaxillary protrusion this will be like this so the angle will be reduced so that is inter incisal angle between the two long axis of incisors the fourth one is lower incisor to NB angle so we have seen upper incisor to NA angle because A is the point in maxilla and B is the point in mandible 
so here we are checking the angle between n and b so this is b point b on mandible symphysis and the lower central incisor axis so this angulation is lower incisor and b angle and it is uh, 25 degree just 25 degree inter incisal angle we know it is 130 degree and we know it will be increased if proclination if this is more proclined more proclined the ang the axis will be going like this so this angle will be increased and it will be decreased if it is retroclined mandible so you think about this axis this axis is going like this or axis is going like this this angle will change if it is proclined this angle will increase if it is reclined this angle will decrease that is lower incisor to nb angle mean value is 25 degree the last measurement is how we seen in upper incisor to na point that linear measurement the same way we have linear measurement from the incisal tip incisal tip to nb line so it is uh, helps us to assess the lower incisor inclination the value is always uh, like 4 mm just like uh, the upper incisor to NA. It is a linear measurement. It is very difficult to show here the lower incisor to this NB line. So linear measurement from the lower incisor. If it is more uh, inclined the value will increase and similar way it will decrease. So it is uh, basically uh, indicate the proclination of lower incisor so that's how we finished the dental analysis the upper incisor to na angle 22 degree and the linear measurement the inter incisal angle the lower incisor to nb angle which is 25 degree and lower incisor to nb linear measurement now we have soft tissue or s line so the last analysis soft tissue analysis or s line it is a facial contour line called S line of Steiner. A line is drawn on the soft tissue contour. Okay, so not this dotted line, this perfect line. A line is drawn on the soft tissue contour of the chin to the middle of the S formed by the middle of the S formed by lower border of nose. So lower border of nose, the S. Okay, so this S, lower border of nose to the contour of chin. That is the soft tissue contour of the chin and lower border and the so in soft tissue analysis that is a line formed by the lower border of nose that is a S shape and the contour of lower chin. If these lips are located beyond this line, this dotted line you can see over it in front of this, that will be indicating of protrusive and interpreted as convex profile and, it, and if it is the lip is behind this the line is said to be retrusive with a concave profile so that's all about soft tissue analysis we have covered stenius analysis so we had dental parameters skeletal parameters and soft tissue parameters so i'll come up with another session on dentistry and more thank you